Hey there, folks. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about the intersection uh, observer API. It's a pretty sweet uh, new piece of JavaScript functionality that allows us to do <clears throat> a whole a whole bunch of, of really cool things in not many lines of JavaScript. So uh, real quick, just give you an interview or an overview of uh, the intersection observer API, what it is, and what we can do with it. So from the MDN docs, uh, the Intersection Observer API provides us a way to asynchronously observe changes in the intersection of a target element with, ancest with an ancestor element or with a top-level document's viewport. Uh, so the, the short description is this, the Intersection Observer API pretty much gives us a super easy way to tell when uh, an element is within the viewport, and then it passes us back some data that we can then act upon and, and do stuff with. Um, so the the docs here, the MDN docs here, give us a few examples of, of pretty cool things that we can do with it. Lazy loading images, uh, infinite scrolling. Um, you can do tasks or animation things based on whether or not something is in the viewport. And, and one of the more interesting things too, I think, is the, um, uh, the ramifications this has on ads. So traditionally with ads, they ads tend to come across with a whole bunch of like garbage scripts that are poorly written and really inefficient. Um, and a lot of those scripts are surrounded um, by like uh, the fact that advertisers want to track uh, how long their ads are visible on a, a given site. So, um, you know, they'll write a bunch of terrible scripts that have a bunch of like set timeouts and things that are really uh, not performant. Um, and it ends up slowing down the site and, and, and being kind of a pain. So the Intersection Observer API actually does a really good job of uh, solving this issue and is super efficient, streamlines it, and makes it really easy to, to detect when something is in the viewport, when it's left, and how long it was uh, remaining in the viewport. So pretty interesting. Uh, a lot of cool potential use cases for sure. Um, so before we dive in, I, I'm going to write up just like a quick little um, uh, example with, with code and stuff just so you can see um, kind of how to write it and stuff. But uh, before we get into that too much, uh, just like a real quick overview of some of the um, actual pieces of uh, the Intersection Observer. So essentially, the Intersection Observer API is accessed through a constructor. Um, you can instantiate a new intersection observer constructor, uh, constructor, and uh, within that, you basically pass what is called entities, uh, sorry, entries, into the intersection observer. So you tell the observer, "Hey, here's a bunch of things that I want to track, uh, like when they're in the viewport and stuff. Uh, once they're in the viewport, do things with them." So uh, they're referenced as entries. Uh, within the intersection observer. Uh, and then in addition to that, there's a few um, properties uh, that you have access to through the API. And actually, there's a uh, there's a pretty solid blog post on David Walsh's blog by uh, Neil Roberts uh, about the intersection observer. Uh, it goes into detail with like how it works, uh, some of the shortcomings, since it is like a new technology, there is there are, there are definitely some some bugs and some things that need to be worked out a little bit. But uh, they go into depth uh, in that here and kind of show you what those issues are, how to get around them, that type of thing. Um, but the the main thing that I'm going to focus on real quick here is just the the few properties um, that are really, uh, like they say here, at the core of, of uh, the Intersection Observer API. So uh, when you pass entries into the Intersection Observer, you then get access to these properties like is intersecting, um, which basically just tells us whether or not something is in the viewport, um, whether or not that entry is within the viewport. So it's a Boolean, it returns true or false. Um, pretty simple, but very useful. Uh, the intersection ratio is a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's a number between zero and one, essentially telling us that um, how much of the entry is in the viewport. Um, the intersection rect, uh, like it says here, is an object with numbers indicating the size with width, height, uh, position, top, left, bottom, and right. So it gives us the uh, uh, 
uh, some information about where the entry is within the viewport uh, in this example. Uh, so those last two, the ratio and rect, I'm not going to go into too much. I'm just going to very simply use the is intersecting property uh, for our example. So uh, I'm going to jump into the code next, just real quick, just so you can see the, the support uh, since intersection observer is fairly new. There isn't, uh, there isn't support in IE 11, shocker, um, and Safari, so any WebKit um, browser isn't supporting uh, the intersection observer quite yet, though the, the WebKit does have it in development. So hopefully fairly soon, uh, Safari, whatever else uses WebKit can, uh, can catch up and, and use uh, the intersection observer. Uh, there are some polyfills. The W3C actually has a polyfill for this, but I think I was reading through some of the issues and stuff. There's some kind of strange problems uh, with this polyfill, um, but if you absolutely have to uh, support IE11, or I guess at this point Safari, um, which I assume most people would, uh, the, the polyfill is worth looking into. Um, you'll likely run into some weird issues, but Hopefully they'll just support it soon. So with that, uh, we'll get into just a quick little example. Uh, I figured a, a decent um, quick example of this would just to be like, build a grid of images, detect when those images are in the viewport, have them animate in, and then like lazy load some actual images in there. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I built out just this quick, um, this just a quick, HTML with some grid items and stuff with placeholder images in it for now. Uh, what I'm going to do is like, if this were like a production type of thing, you could have like a nice placeholder image that has like an icon or something that uh, shows while, you know, images are loading and things like that. And, and, and then replace that image with a different URL once, uh, once that uh, grid item is in view. So uh, let's lay this out really quick here. So for the grid container, I'm just going to have it be display grid. We'll do some grid template columns. Oops. Grid template columns. And do repeat. Just autofill the grid. Have them be at least 300 pixels wide and fill the rest of the space. Uh, for the columns, we'll just, uh, for, sorry, for the rows, we'll just do grid, grid, auto, rows. Just do a min-max on that of, uh, what do I want to do? So, two, let's just say 270 pixels, and then one fill remaining, do, 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 do. And all, since that's spanning the full width, I'll make this max width 1,000 pixels and center it. So there's a container uh, for each of the images. Since these look terrible right now, we'll just do grid item image. Uh, just use object fit for this example. Cover and there we go. So we got a bunch of images in a grid, just filling the space. Um, of the grid and then so each of these grid items I'm going to want to animate in so we're just going to do like a little um, a little animation where they uh, translate down and fade in just with the transform and opacity so each grid item is going to start um, we'll just translate y up 10% we'll just move them up we can then set the transition to transform. We'll do uh, 600 milliseconds transform. And then I'm just going to use this nice little easing function here. And yeah, that should be good for now. Um, I guess initially, too, we'll need to um, set the opacity so that these fade in. So we'll do opacity zero by default um, and 
will also need to animate that opacity. So we'll do 600 milliseconds uh, opacity, and that same easing function. And let's delay the opacity too, so that it um, uh, so that it translates down a little bit first, and then o the the opacity comes in. Um, I think that'll just look a little bit better, but that's not the point, so that's fine. Uh, let's see what else do we need to do. So we need to add a uh, class for when the in view. Um, for when the grid item is in view. So if this has a class of in view, then we'll just transform translate y down to zero and set the opacity to one. And that should be fine, cool. So normal CSS stuff, that should be good. Uh, so now onto the JavaScript for the actual intersection observer API stuff. So. Uh, like I mentioned before, we pretty much just instantiate a new intersection observer um, just by assigning that to a constant. We'll just call that observer const, const observer, instantiate a new instance of that intersection observer. Um, so when we actually um, run this function, we are going to want to pass it um, various entries, various things we want the intersection observer to actually observe, right? So um, I'll just do a little arrow function here and call those entries. Um, so because we will likely be getting multiple entries um, into, into this intersection observer, we'll want to do a, a for each to to observe each one of these entries individually, right? So uh, we'll do entries, oops, entries dot for each, and we'll call each one of these just a singular entry. And we'll do another arrow function here. Uh, and then within here, um, we're gonna wanna use those one of those same properties that we talked about, the uh, is intersecting property. Um, to detect when the thing is actually in the viewport. So if we just do entry dot is intersecting uh, equals 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 true, uh, we're actually going to want to wrap this in a conditional. So if the entry is in the viewport, then do stuff. Otherwise, don't. Uh, so then within here, what we will want to do is take that entry and add the in view class that we just wrote um, to that entry. Um, what we can do real quick just so I can show you is um, let's look at what a um, what the entry actually looks like. Uh, and we're actually before I do that, we're going to need to run this. So we'll just run observer. Uh, we're going to need to give it something to actually watch. So I'll set the um, grid items to a constant here and just do document dot query selector all uh, grid item. Make sure that's a class. Um, so we've got that set to a variable. And because that's going to be a node list, um, we're going to want to do a for each on that as well. So items dot for each uh, for each item then we'll do stuff so for each of those items we will run the observer on that individual item oops uh, item there we go uh, observer is not a function oh it should be oh right so we the um the when I instantiate it here, I need to actually tell it there's another property I need to run. I need to tell it to observe. Um, so that's the actual uh, like property that will tell the intersection observer to um, start watching these various items on the page. So observer dot observe and then the item that you want to watch. Uh, so you can see here in the console that the um, 
the entry that we get back is just this whole big thing of data and it's one one for each of the uh, grid items in here. Uh, we can dive into this a little bit and you can see that there are things like the bounding client rect, the uh, intersect, the, so these are the couple things that we talked about earlier, the intersection ratio, um, the intersection rect where it gives you the, 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 the various dimensions of the entry itself. And then uh, the thing that we're looking for here actually is the target. So this is the actual DOM node associated with the entry uh, within this for each loop. So instead of console logging that, we will say uh, if the entry is in view, then we want to take that entry, get the target of that entry, and add a class. So we'll do class list add, uh, what did we name that? In view. So let's add in view. So that should, yeah, actually apply classes to the things that are initially in view. So if we inspect these again, you can see that the uh, grid items that are in view have the in view class. And as we scroll down, um, they are getting that in view class applied and the animation is running. So already in like 13 lines of code, we've pretty much got a like in view um, detector where we're able to actually interact with these um, entries as they show up um, on the screen. So if we just reload this just so that we can see within this smaller view, as you scroll down, things start appearing. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so on top of that, then what we'll want to do is actually like lazy load some real images on top of these, right? So um, what I'm going to do within the intersection observer is just set the um, set the image uh, associated with each one of these grid items, each one of these entries into a variable. Um, so we'll just do const uh, image is going to equal entry target dot query selector. We'll just grab the image. Uh, and then from there, we can set the source of that image. So once it's in, in view, we're pretty much just going to replace the uh, placeholder image URL and um, put in, we'll, we'll just use like the random unsplash image, right? So um, if we do image.source equals, actually I have a URL here that I'll copy. Do, do, do. Set that image to a random unsplashed image. Get rid of that. Uh, so as you can see now, um, these uh, top grid items have the actual unsplashed random image that we've assigned to them. Uh, the ones that aren't in view further down the page are still utilizing the placeholder image. So um, it's not requesting any images yet that it doesn't need because these aren't in view. So we're getting a nice little um, cheap lazy loading script here. So as we scroll down, um, that URL is hit and it asks for an unsplashed image. So uh, that's pretty fancy. Uh, it only happens once right now. So like we can we can check then once it's out of the viewport. So else, um, if it's out of the viewport, then we'll just say entry target class list dot remove in view. And as these elements scroll out of the viewport, they should get um, removed. That's nice. And we scroll back up. They animate in on the way up too. So yeah, it's a really cheap, simple way to do uh, image lazy loading, detect when something's in view, and um, yeah, it's it's super powerful. Seems like a pretty cool uh, API that we can hook into with uh, with JavaScript. So hopefully uh, you found that useful. Um, I'll throw a link to this like finished thing once I kind of cleaned it up a little bit uh, in the description. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks.